Last couple prossimo. Today I'm going to be slapping a bit of paint around creating this fun hoverboat image. Voi gotovi? If you spend any time looking at concept art, there's one individual that I don't think you can escape, British artist Ian McHugh. He put his stamp on the world of concept art years back and now his grungy floating ships and battered mechs are pretty much staples in the field. They're emulated over and over again. I just drool over this stuff. I wish I could work this way. Just so darned appealing. Well, he's light years ahead of most of us mere mortals, but today let's have some fun trying to paint a bit like him using a fantastic blender add-on called Stylized Asset Suite. This thing was created by another little wizard, a certain crazy jar, and I really do recommend this. You can pick up the free version at the link in the description. One of Ian McHugh's techniques is the 3D paint over. He creates a simple 3D model, sets up the camera angle the way he wants, outputs a still, and then paints over that in Photoshop. Today, I want to try out a slightly different technique. Like Ian McHugh, I'm going to try to use quite simple 3D geometry, but I'm not then going to hop into Photoshop. Instead, I'm going to stay in Blender. I want to see how much detail, how much life I can bring to my model by relying on texture painting instead of, you know, modeling all those details in 3D. First things first, though, we can't get around the fact that our models are going to have to be UV unwrapped. How we do that is for another tutorial, but it's just got to be done. So as we Brits say, here's one I made earlier. We'll be texture painting, so I'll switch to texture paint layout. Just click that tab at the top of the Blender viewport. And then in the 3D view, I need to make sure that I'm in texture paint mode. I'll also need to be in material preview shading mode so that I can see the texture that I'm making. Now, one thing to get your head around with texture painting is that what you're actually doing is painting a flat image. And that flat image, thanks to the magic of UV unwrapping, will be wrapped around the 3D model. So with this boat hull object selected, over in the Stylized Asset Suite tab, I just click New, and my object appears to lose all detail, and it goes this lilac bluish color. In the Stylized Asset Settings, I now have this automatically named New Material. I'll just rename that to Material Hull. Scrolling down, I can see something called Base Color. Now, if I toil that open, you can see that this is what's causing my model to be, this blue color. Click on the color chip to change it. I'm going to go for a rusty base color. Now, this is akin to the way a traditional artist might work, traditional painter. You lay down a base color, a logical base color, right the way across an object, and then you gradually cover that over with other colors to bring out volume, light and shades, etc. Now, with this rusty base color, I can then daub colors around over the top of that and say whenever I leave a gap or whenever I rub a bit out, I'll see this brown color showing through, a bit like, you know, rust showing through on an old machine. Now, at this point, in order to see a bit more detail, I need to add in some stylized lighting using this add-on. So under Build Your Stylized Shader, select Effect, and I'm going to add in the first thing in the list, Stylized 3D Lighting Main. I then have to confirm that by clicking Add Effect. As you can see, that adds in a bit of cell or tune shading. The next thing for me to do is add in a new paint layer. So once again, back into the effect menu and under hand drawn texturing, I want this texture paint, draw all colors. 
Again, confirm by clicking add effect. And there it is in our effects list, texture paint number one. Now, here's where you really have to pay attention because in Blender, I have to say the texture paint setup is quite convoluted and to be honest, not very user friendly. It's really easy to get caught out by missing one of these steps. Remember that texture painting is really painting flat images. Twirl down the texture paint effect and here is where we're going to set up an image to paint. Before we go any further, look at this reminder. Make sure alpha is set to zero when adding texture. Okay, I'll click new, call it hull paint layer 01. I'm going to up the resolution a bit, so click and drag over both of these width and height fields. 2048 for a 2K image. Now, here's where that reminder comes in. Click on that color chip there, click on alpha, and set that to zero. What that has done is create a completely sort of transparent canvas, and that's now ready to paint onto. Next, click on new image to confirm that, and believe it or not, we are not quite done. We need to ensure we are painting onto that newly created blank image. First, I'll just click on the name of our new image, copy that, and then in the 3D viewport, check that you are in uh, texture paint mode. And at the top, a little bit across to the right, click that image drop down and check that you are painting a single image. And of course, it has to be our newly created hull paint layer 01. Just paste that in there. Now, in the image editor, that should have automatically switched to the correct image. But in case it hasn't, just click on the image drop down, do the same, paste your uh, image name in there, hull paint layer 01 in this case. And again, in the image editor, just double check that you are in paint mode here. Now, Here's a little gotcha, a little glitch perhaps in Blender. You may find that you try and start painting in the 3D viewport and it doesn't work. If so, select a brush color over in the image editor here. Make sure you've got the paintbrush selected and just start painting. And that should jog the 3D viewport into life. From then on, you should be able to paint that. One of the very handy features of Stylized Asset Suite is the brushes that it comes with, which you can see in this Asset Manager down at the bottom. Each one has its own preloaded colors, but you can easily change these just by right-clicking in the viewport. You get this little color menu open. Also, over in Tool Properties, Blender does have this palette feature, which can really help to speed up switching between colors. Make yourself a new palette, then add swatches to it by setting a color in the color wheel, then clicking the little plus. I really like these brushes because they make it easy to build up organic looking layers of paint. For this rough hand painted old tug thing, I think the gouache one is going to work well. I tend to switch off pressure-based strength just up at the top of the screen there. You can see in the brush settings, that little pressure button, I'll switch that off. And I'm just going to set the opacity manually with the Shift F shortcut. Now, if I want to erase some paint, I can just right click and switch to Erase Alpha. Don't forget, though, to switch back to Mix to start painting again. One thing that you may notice is that the paint layer that we're now making doesn't interact with this stylized uh, cell shading, the stylized lighting. If I come under the boat and paint a little bit here, say with a light color, You can clearly see the shadow on the brown rusty hull is ignored 
by this paint. So as if I can paint over shadows. And that's just to do with layer order in the stylized asset material. Now, a quick warning here. I have experienced Blender crashing when I reorder these layers. So do save your work before you try this out. But at the bottom is this swap effects button. So I'll just swap the layer order of the light and the paint layer here. And now you can see the shadow is going over that paint. I can, if I want, add more texture paint layers too. Each time you make a new paint layer though, remember you're going to have to go through the same image process as with the first texture paint layer. Make a new image. I'll call it, say, whole paint layer two. Again, check its alpha is zero. Then make sure you're painting on that image in both viewports like we did earlier. Whilst I'm in this drop down, it's a good idea to click this save all images button because Blender doesn't save these images automatically. Though if you were to quit Blender, you should get a reminder to do that. But just remember at the moment, these images are just being held in RAM and they will just disappear when Blender closes unless you save them. Now, again, I can decide which paint layer goes on top of which in the stack. These very simple techniques are exactly what I used to create this render. And once you've got your head a bit around the Blender image texture setup, the uh, texture painting setup, it really is a fun and intuitive way to work. There are tons more features um, to stylized asset suite. If you purchase the full version, there's even more. There's 23 different brushes, edge detection, God rays, fog effects, the list goes on. Stylized asset suite. I really do recommend this one. In the coming weeks, I'll be going into more detail about texture painting techniques in general in Blender, how to set up brushes, how to use stencils, how to use the free YouTube paint add-on built into Blender. And with that, you can build up lovely layers of texture. Well, thanks again for watching. And for now, do zustrichi. 3D from Zero makes tutorials and tips about 3D software. If you're into 3D or you'd like to be, check out my free course on 3dfromzero.com and there are some paid courses there too. Thanks for watching.